Welcome to a short tutorial on enterprise architecture from Adaptive Processes. I am Ellen. I work as the principal consultant with Adaptive. You may be a little surprised to see this uh, picture of an elephant on uh, the presentation. Uh, but don't worry, I will uh, tell you about uh, this elephant story a little later. Uh, the relevance is something like this. Uh, I, once I was conducting um, and a session for information security managers um, and there were a lot of them from different companies and I asked a very simple question to them saying what could be the worst thing that could happen to your organization I got a very surprising answer and one of the managers actually stood up and said uh, a virus attack I was a bit surprised that uh, of course virus attack is something that can create trouble for a company, maybe your work will stop for a day or two at best. But telling that uh, a virus attack is the worst thing that a company can go through was really a surprising thing for me. Then I recognized the fact that most IT people have been so much involved in their day-to-day -day operational activities that they really find it hard to understand what is true enterprise architecture. In fact, most often when I go and consult my clients, when you ask for an enterprise architecture document or concepts, they actually show you IT architecture. IT is critical, uh, there's no doubt about it, but it doesn't mean IT is business. There are other elements of business which are probably equally vital and which is what we miss many often. So let's understand how things uh, happen. So if I ask this very simple question, what is enterprise architecture, I may actually receive or we may receive actually many different answers. So for example, in typical business analysis books, you will see this, which is your enterprise organizational model. So you have, um, this is typical uh, model that you mostly see. You have a CEO and MD, then you have head of delivery, head of sales, head of HR, and head of delivery, of course, has his organization or her organization, a BU heads, account managers, project managers, team leads, and developers. Then, to some other people, if you ask, you may actually see something like this, which is a little bit more detailed. Okay, And this mostly follows from your um, Jackman framework. So, they talk of uh, scope, business model, system model, still technology. Nothing, nothing beyond technology. Then, another one could be a process head. If you are talking to a process head, the process head would give you a process interaction charge, chart as the enterprise uh, architecture. Or if you are talking to an IT head, you will probably talk about uh, or he or she would talk about the various systems that they have, the various network, data, servers, they will talk in that language. So this reminds me or this brings me to my discussion on the story of the elephant and I think many of you might have heard this story as well this is a famous giant story and in this what happens is there are six blind men who go out and they encounter an elephant and each one of them touch different parts of the elephant and they describe the elephant as that so for example somebody touches the tail and and he says elephant is like a large rope and somebody touches the uh, body and uh, uh, and he tells it's a massive thing and it, it's a bulky thing. Somebody touches the tusk and describes the elephant as the tusk uh, or something like a huge pipe. So similarly, this is what is happening for most organizations. When you go and talk about enterprise um, architecture, everybody seems to be defining something from their perspective, but there is no holistic view of an enterprise. So let's see what can we actually understand an organization and what does an enterprise document and enterprise architecture document should tell us. Okay. So as we understand, many often we describe enterprise architecture from an IT angle, but I would like to go beyond it. Uh, IT, as I said before, isn't very critical, but there are other elements to business as well. So as I said, um, by the enterprise architecture should give you an idea about an organization uh, at a very very succinct level that means you read about 20 pages and you get to understand quite a lot about the organization 
and that serves you as a guide for deciding to do something or not to do something. So typical elements that we should include um, in an enterprise architecture should include marketplace, your business strategy, your business services, business information, business processes, events, event value chain, organization structure, business functions, services, capabilities, a whole lot of things. So based on this model, what we decided is to actually come up with um, a enterprise architecture document, uh, which we feel can actually serve like a starting point for you. So let me show you the enterprise architecture document that we have created as an organization. So this is our cover page, so which I'll skip. Okay. And the table of contents is of course there. So in the very first uh, area, I'm writing a little bit about what the company does, what is the main purpose behind the company. Then we come down a little bit and we talk about business needs that we serve as an organization. So for example, adaptive processes as an organization primarily serves the process needs of organizations. That's where the whole company stands. Then if you come down, I come to the third topic which is our vision mission and values so the vision is to be among top 10 it process consulting organization and mission is to help organizations manage their governance risk and compliance in a cost effective manner then we come to our values so i have described the values here then we come to a little bit of a description of our organizational journey because that gives an insight to any of our stakeholders to understand how did the organization came up? What is it that it is trying to do? So if you see, I have depicted uh, from 2006 to 2009, 2012, 13, 14, 15, and what we plan to do in 2016 and 18. So if you look at this particular map, you will understand what Adaptive has done and what it plans to do. Then we come down to our future roadmaps, which is a very specific one for a particular service line because this is something that we as an organization would like to uh, be worldwide known as. So that's why we have described um, a pretty detailed journey map for that. Then this is our product roadmap because we have a GRC solution. So how the GRC solution would move. So if you see here, the GRC solution will start supporting Agile, then it will start supporting ITIL, then we plan to put it on cloud. So that's what I have described here. Then it comes to our capabilities and offerings. So if you see here, uh, we have three main lines of offering, product consulting and competency development. So coming to product, we have uh, multiple products and project management, requirements management, IT risk management, CMMI implementation services, competency management, uh, and of course a video based uh, uh, business management system. Then coming to services, these are the services that we offer mostly on the business analysis side, process definition, process improvement, managed PMO, ISO 27K, and whole lot. Then coming to competency development, mostly we work in the business analysis, agile, project management, requirements engineering, CMMI, and all these modules. Then we come to a little bit about our competition because as an organization, we must understand with whom we are competing and how do we do better. So we have put a little bit about our competition. Okay, so competition in service, what are the weaknesses that we have? Then what is our competitive strategy? How do we plan to compete in the marketplace? That is described here. Then I have also described a target operating model, which says, who are our customers? What is the technology that we would take the roadmap? What are the solutions that we are providing? What are the, who are the kind of people that we need? What are the geographies that we would like to focus? All that has been described at a high level in the target operating model. Then comes the growth strategy. Then after that, a uh, little bit write up on GRC Perfect, which is our primary product. Then our competitive advantage. Then key clients that we have today. So you understand what are the kind of uh, uh, clients that uh, Adaptive has been uh, working with over last 10 years or so and then we come to this is a little bit of a description where all our clients are located at this point in time who are our collaborators because like we have competitors we do have collaborators as well so these collaborations also will help an organization to go forward so we have pretty 
um, well-known collaborators in terms of IIBA, IREB, Scrum Study, uh, and ISC, and many others. Uh, then again, we have seen this diagram, so I have already put it. So what are the key delivery processes or organizational processes that we run that is described here. Then our R&D and innovation, uh, because we as an organization would, are very, very innovation uh, focused and we probably would have created about 30 innovations in the process management system uh, itself. Then uh, coming to next one, uh, this is our organizational architecture. So as you see the clients at the topmost layer because that's what we serve and that's how we survive. So they are supported by our sales professionals, consultants and developers and who in turn are supported by the managers and the board. And then I have described about our key stakeholders and what are the expectations. The key applications that we use so in terms of GRC Perfect, our e-commerce portal, we use Google trackers as well. And then I come to key business events that we need to respond to uh, because these are your moment of truth. So when does a customer reach and how do you make sure that the reach is always uh, pleasant for the customer? Then we come to key business information that we need to be aware of and we must keep them securely. So all that is provided here. And then our HR landscape. So what kind of people we have on board, all those information. So you also can see the different competencies that we hold in terms of requirements, engineering, Scrum and Agile, CMMI, project management, sales and software development and all that. And this is our infrastructure landscape, which tells you like how the IT infrastructure looks like. And uh, then what are the key assets that we have? And then our business functions. So this is uh, in a nutshell, I would describe as a pretty decent uh, enterprise architecture document, which allows you to describe the company's past, uh, current and future roadmap. It also describes the key competencies that the organization has um, and uh, key information and assets that the organization has. So uh, you can find many more such videos on our website uh, if you are interested. Uh, you can write to us at info at adaptiveprocesses.com and do stay tuned uh, on our uh, YouTube uh, channel and also on our website to uh, see whatever new things that we are doing in the requirements engineering and business analysis community. Thank you. Bye-bye.